Hey, a pleasant good afternoon, everybody. This is Sports Fan News. I'm Joe Boric, a.k.a. Pro Joe, and this is going to be a quick Philadelphia Phillies video on if they will be able to close out the series for the first time since 2012. Uh, credit to Matt Breen for this one. It would be the first time if they're able to do it, they would win a series at Coors Field since the 15th of July in 2012. That's pretty bad. Uh, there were lineup members in that lineup, as Ty Wigginton, who's been out of the league for a while now. Remember that big... Uh, Broad, very muscular dude. I love Ty Wigginton, honestly. Um, Placido Polanco, John Mayberry dives eight feet before the ball. Junior, Mike Fontenot, a cub, and then Giant, a guy that bounced around a bit, that small uh, second baseman, if anyone reminds him. Then we, of course, had Jimmy, Victorino, Pence, and Ruiz as guys that everybody remembers. And Cole Hamels was the guy that pitched that day. Maybe somebody that, if the Phillies start in rotation, keeps struggling. I know they went to scout Anibal Sanchez. Um, he looked all right there, but maybe somebody they'll be able to reunite with. Uh, we'll see as time goes on. But before we move into this, we have to point out another thing from Matt Breen. For people that don't have Twitter or don't see on Twitter, I'd like to point these out. Uh, Nick Maton's nine hits through his first five games is tied for the most by any Philly in club history, joining Joe Ward in 06, Art Mahan in 1940, Ted uh, Z Slack, I guess that is, in 44, and then, of course, the great Richie Ashburn in 48, and then Kevin Stocker, who's currently a broadcaster for, I think, the Pac-12 network and CBS in 1993. Um, but will the Phillies be able to close this out? It's going to come down to um, how good of a game is Chase Anderson able to have against John Gray. John Gray this year has been very good. It seems like he's uh, coming back. <coughs> to being what people thought he would be at the beginning of his career when he broke out in 2017, going 10-4 and four with that mid-3s ERA, it seems like he's starting to revert back to that. If that's the case, then the Phillies got to be aggressive on his fastball early because then he's just going to get you with his off-speed or with his fastball perfectly located in your um, not-so-targeted um, hit zone. So his whip this year has been a 112. That's very good for him. He already has 21 strikeouts pretty much matching his innings pitched. Or 22.1. So if the Phillies, I did do this in my series preview as well, preview this game, but this is a little bit more in detail. If they want to win this game, they got to jump on Gray early from how it looks like he's pitched this year because obviously in Coors Field, Jim Salisbury said this on the Phillies start podcast with Corey Simon. If you can get the ball up in Coors Field, we saw it with Ramael Tapia's walk off home run that I get to in the series reaction video that I do after this game's over. But you get the ball up in the stratosphere in Coors Field, anything can happen. So. Uh, that's going to be a key for the Phillies today uh, the, to win their first series since 2012. It looks like it's either we're just riding with Mayton because he's absolutely killing it in a stud so far this far. Hope that continues. I think this kid, I've always liked him as a kid that's going to at least stick in the league. I just thought he was going to be that super utility. They talked about that on Phillies Talk too, but like the Brock Holt S guy that can play all over the place but be much better at fielding than Holt. Holt wasn't a bad fielder, but Mayton's known for having a strong arm and a lethal glove. And that's what he's shown this far short. I wouldn't be surprised if until Gene comes back, if that lingers, unfortunately, I hope it doesn't because he's one of our best hitters, but if it does, does. Um, it wouldn't be surprising if because of how Didi struggled at short, they play him at some second and try to let Maton play short because fielding is pivotal. You have to be able to pick the ball as well as you can hit the ball. And right now, the Phillies fielding has still been struggle bunny. And it's because of somewhat the elbow of Didi, but that means just to help him out as well with uh, his injury and his swung, you should then put him at second even too. So we'll have to see how that happens going forward. That's not going to happen today. Nick Maton's at second. Didi is at short. He's been one of our best hitters with 12 ribbies along with uh, Alec Boehm who's not hitting for average, but still driving them in with 12 ribbies. Uh, the Phillies, obviously, you got to leave less guys on base. You left too many on base in the first game of the series yesterday. It was better, obviously, to be able to get the win, uh, but it was really led by Reese Hoskins, which we'll get to in the po in the um, series reaction. In this game, you got to jump on John Gray early. He's a guy, if you let him get into the game, he's going to do what he's doing this year, 2 and one 2.42 ERA. He's just going to round and pound you and dominate. Um, he's going to have great games if you let him just get in the groove of it. He's already had a very good game against the Dodgers twice this year. Um, he's pitched pretty solid against the Dodgers. He only pitched four in the one, but gave up three, and they removed him. He probably could have won five. And then he's pitched good against Houston um, in the other game, and then Arizona. So he's faced three uh, very good opponents, and then Arizona, who's a solid team this year, but uh, competing this far, but obviously not to the elk of those other teams on paper or with how they're competing. So he's been good this year. With Chase Anderson, our guy, I honestly have 
confidence in Anderson. They were talking about on the Philly Show podcast how they only have confidence in kind of three of our starters for sure. I would actually add Anderson into that because Anderson's pitch perfectly fine the only thing with him was he got removed um after five innings he pitched very good against the Mets he actually did go five then he got removed after four innings because it was a seven inning double header I think he could have won five in that game only giving up um two runs to that same Metropolitan's team in New York that time then he got removed again after the fourth just for a pinch hitter which I actually thought was a bad decision by Girardi because I understand our offense isn't doing well but you can't keep this is something I agree with People that are saying in fan groups, I agree with Salisbury when it brought up, you can't keep taxing the bullpen early, particularly now when Jose Alvarado and Archie Bradley are both out. So I was surprised they took him out after the fourth inning in that San Francisco game. He also could have went deeper there. So realistically, this guy's only went five, uh, which was good. They took him out then. That was actually the right decision against the Mets in the first game. Four and four just because one was a seven-inning game, so I'm fine with that decision. But then, against San Francisco, just not really the best decision to pinch hit for him. It ended up being what happened. I didn't bring it up on that uh, series reaction because it wasn't that deep, but it is something that I just think of now just to just kind of defend Anderson and say he's actually pitched a hell of a lot better than even his numbers would say. And a 4-1-5 for a fifth starter ain't bad. If I can have a full season of a 4-1-5 ERA, a 4 ERA from a fifth starter that gives me five innings or even six, giving the Phillies six today, would be another key to the game. I think it has to be at least five, but six would be one of my keys for the game just to be able to rest the bullpen, only have them go three without having Alvarado and Archie Bradley out there. I think that would be pivotal um, for this game. I think he has to at least go five, but one of my keys would be him going six. And then my second key, again, would be jump on John Gray early. He looks like he has that as money pitches back. He looks like he's locked in this year, so you got to jump on him early. Um, you got to attack. you got to be able to be as aggressive as you are when guys aren't on base as they are when they're on base. For some reason, this Philly team sometimes seems less aggressive when guys are actually on base, which should be the opposite. If you get a good pitch, pound and jump on it when the guys are on base. So I want to see that. And then obviously, um, in this game, like I said, you want to just see hitting. You want to see McCutcheon. I think another key would be McCutcheon has had a couple better swings this series. So I think my third key would be maybe continue to get him going. He looked better with a couple swings. He flew out. He obviously uh, had the hip um, yesterday. So if he can keep getting his thing going, he has two steals. If he can steal a little bit at the top of the lineup, that's tied with Real Muto and Boehm um, for the team lead thus far. If he could do that, that would be good. So I think the third key would just be to continue to get McCutcheon going and have the great guys in the lineup that are hitting and Reese Hoskins and Bryce Harper drive them in, as well as Nicky Maton at the bottom of the line and continue to get on base because that kid's just fun to watch. But the main keys are I think Anderson has to go six. If you can go five, that would be good enough, hopefully, to have one guy, maybe like a Hale, go one inning, and then have the rest of the bullpen, the main guys, kind of take it away, excluding Bradley and Alvarado since they're out. Those are the keys. Jump on gray early. You have to have your starter go at least five, but I would say particularly six in this one. Be able to rest that bullpen that's been used a lot. And then you want to see Andrew McCutcheon continue to have better success at the top of the lineup because the Phillies, especially when Brad Miller's out now too, unless you're putting Maton as a rookie, which is a lot of pressure. He's doing good at the bottom of the lineup, but it's a lot of pressure as a rookie to put up there. Don't have a better leadoff option until at least Mean Gene Segura comes back, who's on a hot streak. He's a, such a streaky player, Segura, but he was doing really well and having one of those great months, and then we lost him. Um, so hopefully Kutch can keep it up, have your pitcher go at least sit five innings, hopefully six innings, so the bullpen only has to go three, and then also jump on gray here. So those are many of the, some of the three keys there, and then the others, of course, I gave you. I hope you all enjoyed this quick preview of their final game, just kind of saying how the Phillies haven't won a series in court since 2011. How are they going to be able to do it? We outlined some ways in this video. Comment below how you think they're going to be able to do it, or if you think they're going to be able to do it. As this game starts at 310, about an hour's time from now, everyone have a great, safe, and pleasant day, and enjoy the baseball. Stay safe out there. Peace out.